Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about peak and plateau pressure. Different modes of mechanical ventilation have not been shown to be superior to each other. So my suggestion is to know one way of ventilating your patient and the easiest one of them is volume assist control. The reason I like it is because it's easy to troubleshoot and most of the studies have been done using this mode. Other mode do offer some advantages depending on the patient population but we'll not talk about them here. So let's see what peaks and plateau pressures are. During inspiration, the ventilator is giving you the tidal volume and as the tidal volume goes in your lungs, the pressure inside the lungs increases. Once all the tidal volume goes in, the pressure is the highest and this is called peak pressure and this is the place where you perform inspiratory hold. Once you perform inspiratory hold, the pressure are going to redistribute in the alveoli and a point will come when the pressure will become constant and that is called plateau pressure. The difference between plateau pressure and peep at this point is called driving pressure. You know that if there is no flow, there is no resistance. So the difference between plateau and peep gives you the compliance portion of the circuit and the difference between peak and plateau where there was flow of air gives you the resistance of the circuit. So peak pressure depends upon three parts, how much resistance is in the circuit, what's your compliance of the system and how much total peep is there in the circuit. There's an ongoing debate about how long should the inspiratory pause be and the answer seems to be anywhere between 0.5 to 2 seconds. The longer you hold the end inspiratory pause, the lower your plateau pressures are going to be. However, that difference is very small, only up to 1 to 2 centimeter of water pressure. Holding an end inspiratory pause for around 2 seconds should give you a decent idea about plateau pressures. Let's look at some of the information that inspiratory pause gives us. When you see an inspiratory pause without any plateau pressure, think about leak in the circuit. The commonest cause for this is cuff leak. And cuff leak is associated with increased rates of VAP, so noticing that is really important. If you see it, auscultate the neck for gurgling sounds. If you see any frothiness in nose or mouth, there is most likely some cuff leak present. The other reason for cuff leak will include chest tube with persistent leak, some other leak in the ventilator circuit and endotracheal tube, or very, very rarely tracheoesophageal fistula. One of the waveforms that we commonly use on VCAC mode is the descending waveform as it's more physiological and more comfortable for the patient. However, when you are performing an inspiratory pause, make sure that you're using a square waveform. Since measurement of peak pressure requires a constant flow, using a descending waveform will not give you accurate peak pressure measurements. Patient inspiratory or expiratory effort during the inspiratory pause maneuver can give you inaccurate plateau or no plateau at all. So make sure there are no spontaneous patient breaths. Checklist before performing inspiratory pause. Make sure that you are in VCAC mode. Waveform is square. There is no patient vent asynchrony and there are no spontaneous respirations. So the first question we always ask is, are you noticing any patient vent asynchrony? Because if this is present, you cannot really perform a good inspiratory or expiratory pause. On every machine, there is a peak alarm setting, which will alarm when the peak pressure rises above a certain level. Usually it is set between 45 to 55 centimeter of water. And this is important for patient safety because there are many reasons why peak pressure should rise as we will see in a few moments. But the commonest reason for this is patient vent asynchrony because as the patient gets agitated, breathes in and out, he can make the pressure rise higher than your settings and your allowance will keep going off. We'll talk about this in some other lecture. First question is how to find out resistive problems. So if this is your normal inspiratory pause, you can see a peak pressure, plateau pressure, and a total resistance is given by peak minus plateau divided by flow. However, if you see that peak minus plateau is increasing, that means your total resistance in the circuit is increasing. So normal resistance when you calculate will be around two to three centimeter of water, and it will increase as your obstruction gets more severe Notice that the flow in this formula is liter per second and not liter per minute, which is usually shown on the vent. 
Usually when you are using the flow rate of around 40 liters per minute, peak minus plateau less than 10 is normal resistance. So bottom line, increased peak minus plateau shows increased resistance in the circuit. So let's see what can cause this. The first thing is make sure that the flow on the ventilator is the same and nobody has changed that because increasing the flow will increase the resistance as well and will increase peak minus plateau. Smaller ET tube size will have higher peak minus plateau, but these don't happen acutely. One of the problems with the smaller tube is if these tubes get narrowed, the effect on the dropping the flow would be much higher if you use smaller size ET tubes. For example, if you drop the radius of ET tube from 8 to 7, it will result in 41% drop in flow, while if you drop from 6 to 5, you can actually drop up to 52% of the flow. Kinking of tube in the back of the throat and biting the tube are the two common reasons why your resistance in the circuit can increase. Other reasons include narrowing of ET tube from secretion or clots or presence of bronchospasms. Whenever you are evaluating patient with peak alarms and you notice that peak minus plateau is high, the most important thing is to suction the endotracheal tube yourself and see if you are able to pass the suction catheter because it will give you an idea about resistance to insertion and see if there's a mucus plug, kinked tube, or what are the quality of secretions. Make sure that you look at the patient for agitation and signs that if he's biting the AT tube. Always auscultate these patients as well. If you notice patient has kinked AT tube or patient is biting the tube, you can use bite block and reposition the endotracheal tube. If you are dealing with secretions, you can suction them well perform a bronchoscopy or if the tube is almost completely blocked you can even exchange the tube. If the smaller sized ED tube is causing problem so you can exchange it with a larger size ED tube over a bougie. For bronchospasm use bronchodilators. If you have capnogram available notice a reduction in slope of phase 2 and 3 and the capnogram looks more of shark fin appearance. Whenever you deal with resistance always make sure that you are looking at the flow waveform as well and always check if your flows are coming back to baseline if they are not coming to the baseline as shown in red you possibly are also dealing with auto peep let's try to figure out how to find a compliance problem compliance is tidal volume divided by plateau minus peep so if your plateau minus peep increases your compliance drops and whenever you see decreased compliance in the system the most important thing to remember is you are most likely dealing with less number of alveoli present previously and either they are collapsed from a complete obstruction for example in main stem intubation collapse from secretions or pressure from outside for example pneumothorax abdominal distension or pleural effusion or they are filled with something like pulmonary edema ARDS pulmonary hemorrhage etc. So whenever you are dealing with worsening compliance Make sure that you observe them well and palpate abdomen and auscultate them. Always order a chest x-ray and use your bedside ultrasound to figure out what's causing the underlying problem. The main thing about worsening compliance is treating the underlying cause. So reposition the ED tube if you need. Perform bronchoscopy and suctioning if you see lung collapse. If you got edema, increase the peep, diuresis and use cardiac support as needed. If you've got worsening ARDS, you can use proning, optimizing PEEP. And in case of pneumothorax, place a chest tube. And if you see abdominal compartment syndrome, perform a parasensis and use other methods to treat that. If you've got fusions, perform a thoracensis. Next question to ask is if there is an auto PEEP problem. And this you would suspect if there is a problem with resistance component. The way to figure out if you are dealing with auto peep is observe the pressure time loop and the flow time loop. If your baseline pressures are higher than the peep that you have given the patient, you might be dealing with auto peep. And looking at the flow waveforms, you notice that the waveforms are not returning back to baseline. The reason this happens is because there is insufficient time to exhale, which results in air trapping and this causes increased pressure in the lungs and this would be seen in any obstructive diseases. Once you see this, perform an expiratory pause, which will give you 
the magnitude of intrinsic beep. Pressure control modes unfortunately are more difficult to troubleshoot as the changes what you see are drop in your peak flow rate, your volumes and slope of your flow rates. This is a patient on pressure assist control and you can notice that with increased resistance your peak flow has dropped along with decreased in volume. Your slope of both inspiratory and expiratory limb has dropped down and the flow is going to take longer time to come to baseline. Compare this with decreased compliance, you can see that the both peak flow and volume are down while the slope of both inspiratory limb and expiratory limb is possibly better. There's quite a bit of subjectiveness in that. So troubleshooting the pressure control mode can be difficult. However, there are ways to go around it. You can calculate compliance and resistance using the expiratory flow rates and finding the time constant of the expiration. We'll talk about this in much detail when we talk about pressure assist control mode. In summary, make sure that you know where the peak alarms are set. Make sure that you are in VCAC mode with square waveform with no spontaneous breath by the patient when you perform inspiratory or expiratory hold. Perform inspiratory hold to check for peak and plateau pressure every day on vented patient and perform expiratory hold to check for auto peep if you are dealing with patient with obstructive disease. If your peak pressures have increased, examine patient for patient vent asynchrony, perform inspiratory pause. If you see increased peak minus plateau, it suggests obstruction. If you see increased plateau minus peep, it suggests worsening compliance. Perform an expiratory pause to measure the auto peep or intrinsic peep. Thank you.